some people post about how they heard about us, but I am interested to know how you guys heard about us. So um, as we're doing our introductions, I'd love to hear how you heard about the webinar. Um, I'm Susan Tenby, um, and we're talking about social media strategies today. Um, I'm the Director of Global Community at TechSoup. And I'm Stephen Davidson. I am one of the community managers here at TechSoup. Yeah, and um, I would, again, I'd love to hear how people heard about the webinar because that's uh, we're in the marketing department. And so I learn from knowing this stuff. Uh, so um, what I do uh, and what we do as a team is we oversee forums, social media, uh, TechSoup Connect, which is our um, basically our regional community volunteer-led meetups that are regional. And since the pandemic, they have been online. They are sometimes, some of them are coming back in person. And our community-based events are events that connect users with each other, uh, which is a separate program from the webinar, but adjacent to the webinar program that Aretha runs. And also our uh, two-day annual conference, um, online conference. Uh, we had one on the future of work this year and a couple months ago and last, uh, actually was it last month? And last year we had uh, one on digital storytelling. So that's kind of what we do. We also um, start, uh, we started working on um, another community initiative, which I'll talk about in a minute, which is called Quad. But um, really what our team does is connect users to each other. Um, and I've been doing community at TechSoup since we launched, believe it or not, in the year 2000. So um, this is all I do and this is all I've done. And I'm happy to be here with Stephen, who is an expert in social media uh, on my team. Next slide. So today we're going to be um, talking about, uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a short overview on TechSoup in general and what community means, like as a, as a department, as a strategy, how you guys should think about community at your organizations, because every organization should have a community strategy. And then I'm going to hand it over to Stephen, um, and he's going to do the majority of the presentation, the last two thirds of the presentation on social media strategies. And you um, should definitely be taking notes, but we will be sharing uh, the materials around afterwards um, as well. But and he'll be um, including some links in the chat, which are helpful templates and examples. So with that, about TechSoup. So uh, TechSoup uh, is a nonprofit organization. Uh, we've been around since 1987. We were formerly uh, just San Francisco based, but we've become a global organization. Uh, our mission is to build a dynamic bridge that leverages technology to enable connections and innovative solutions for a more equitable planet. So what that means um, on a high level is that we help nonprofits, NGOs, and libraries get the tech they need to better achieve their mission and to um, connect with each other and to amplify the good work that they do. And uh, we are the founding member of the TechSoup Global Network. Uh, we are a global network of um, 62 or, uh, partners across the globe. We're in um, over 360 uh, or 330 uh, partners and territories. And uh, we provide technology products and services and educational uh, information, articles, uh, webinars, as you know, courses. Uh, so we're not just about, we also do um, tech, uh, tech solution services. So we're not just about products. We do a lot more than that. Uh, we also facilitate international grant making for companies and foundations who want to give uh, funds to international agencies. Uh, we help with that. Uh, we also um, help amplify the CSR efforts of corporate entities across the globe. So big companies uh, like Facebook and Google that want to share uh, their services and their products with the nonprofit sector, we kind of are the handshake between those companies and the NGOs. And finally, we incubate community-driven technology projects, so like Apps for Good. We help, we talk to community-based organizations and um, help them do the work that they do by building solutions uh, based on our work directly with them. So apps um, through our Caravan Studios program. Um, next slide, please. And um, as I mentioned, uh, we are in 236 countries and territories. Uh, we're um, 
across a global network of 62 partners. Uh, we do business in every country that the U.S. can do business with. Uh, and we are, as I mentioned, a nonprofit ourselves. We're a nonprofit social enterprise. Uh, we are in 39 languages. We've saved the sector $16 billion in products and services. So we're pretty proud of that. And we've served over 1.3 million nonprofits um, to date. And um, our work with civil society is not just limited to the U.S., as I mentioned. We um, help organizations um, across the globe, for example, our work in Central and Eastern Europe, combating disinformation and misinformation, and um, the equivalent uh, retail value that we've saved um, the sector, or the, we've passed to the sector has been 450 million in donated and discounted products and services. So if you know anyone with a nonprofit or an NGO that doesn't use us, they should, uh, because we can save them a lot of money and we can also teach them a lot of stuff to help them do their work better. So um, we work with over 200 uh, companies, technology companies um, in our catalog. Uh, some of the ones you might've heard of are Adobe, Box, Dell, Cisco, Google, Microsoft, Okta, Slack, and of course, hundreds of others. So you can, um, our catalog isn't just like a pop in and shop kind of catalog. You actually have to be approved as a legitimate 501c3 to use our catalog. But once you are um, approved and validated, you can proceed throughout our products and services and get signed up. Um, and I recommend that you do. And um, some of our other numbers are that we um, are, are, we have over a million newsletter subscribers and 468,000 plus social media followers and subscribers. And as you can see, we, we aren't just, um, people ask us what kind of organizations we serve. Uh, as Oh, there's a request for a phone number um, for Zoom. So maybe uh, if Amy or Andrew could pop that in the chat. Um, as you can see, people ask, ask me often, what kind of organizations do you serve? I can't answer that question because it's such a diverse group. As you can see by the snapshot of our um, organizations in our database, uh, they, there are uh, many, oh. many, can you go back to that slide? Sorry. There oh. are many different types of organizations. It's pretty equally distributed. Um, so all different types of organizations and different mission focus uh, verticals. Next slide, please. Um, as I had mentioned, uh, our newest initiative is called Quad. Um, and Quad is a membership-based uh, initiative that we launched um, a little under six months ago. And Quad, um, like many online communities and services online, um, there is a premium membership to the basic service, uh, which is you pay an annual fee and then you get access to an enhanced service. That's what Quad is. So you might be familiar with like Best Buy does that uh, and with an annual fee and uh, overstock.com. A lot of these um, for-profit websites do it and also nonprofits are also following suit. We um, have this Quad membership at $200 a year and we base that cost on the average annual spend of TechSoup members. So we did, we looked at all of our members and what they spend annually and the average was 200. So that's what we made the fair price at. And what that includes is a personal needs assessment from a technology expert. So somebody kind of does a tech assessment of all of your tech stack, sees what you need, talks to you um, and the dedicated member support. So um, Aaron, in, uh, who's our quad member services specialist, will be your like concierge. So you don't have to go through the catalog. You just write him and say, I want this, this, and this, and he'll order it for you. You also get reduced admin fees. Many products are with no admin fee, so free of admin fee charge after that 200, and others are reduced. The course catalog would be totally free of charge after that $100, $200 annual fee. Um, that would be unlimited use. So it's a great deal, but it's also um, really important because Quad helps you connect with other users. We have an online community at TechSoup, the forums, but this is a much more kind of drill down focused online community. Uh, it has, um, it's right now we launched with food insecurity as our first group. So it's specifically launched there are mostly, I would say 80% of the members are food and security organizations right now, but we are launching new communities. It's um, It also will have 
It has communities of practice as well as communities of purpose. So food insecurity and the mission focus like domestic violence and um, housing assistance are the communities of purpose. There'll also be communities of practice in there. There are right now. So for example, um, Okta users, Microsoft users, um, those ki kinds of tech user groups are also within Quad. Anything you want to know about Quad, you want to learn more, please email community at TechSoup or Susan at TechSoup um, and to learn more. And we'll uh, have an introductory call with you and show you uh, behind the curtain for Quad. Next slide, please. And um, currently our team, um, our small and mighty team who are uh, me, Stephen, Andrew, who's um, helping out in the chat right now, and Eli uh, have a, we manage um, 468,000 plus reach. Uh, so that what we use the word reach instead of followers because YouTube also um, is included and um, YouTube has views. So that's, that's the reach of all of the um, members that people that we reach um, for, via our social media outreach. Um, and as you can see, the handles are all very consistent at TechSoup. Uh, the YouTube is actually at TechSoup Video. We're trying in the process right now to redirect to be at TechSoup on YouTube as well. But for now, everything's at TechSoup. So that's a strategy. Just first, first bullet to take away from this is have a consistent naming strategy for your accounts um, and have the consistent handle so that when you tag across accounts, it will work and so people can remember you. Uh, so what again, what we do is we manage the forums, social media, our TechSoup Connect events um, managed by Eli, who just introduced himself, um, and our community-based events also managed by Eli, which are the Public Good App House events, which are the Tech for Good events that have to do with apps for good, and our larger two-day event, uh, the annual event, um, which happens um, across um, multiple sessions and was last year about digital storytelling and this year about the future of work. Uh, and Eli can answer any questions. He just introduced himself in the chat. Next slide, please. So on a high level, um, these are a lot of words, but uh, this slide is really about what, what we do and why. So, uh, you know, every community team should have a high level goal of why you're doing what you're doing. And for us, it's about expanding the edges of our network. What does that mean? It means we have a certain number of followers, but in order to grow those followers, we need our followers to share our material, right? We need our followers, like a lot of you came here because people told you about it. We need our followers to share our message. So what that means is we have to make dead easy to share messaging, messaging that people want to share, that's not complicated, that's very simple and um, appealing to a large audience. We need to identify where these users are at, find our culture of super fans, which Stephen will talk about. So once we identify those groups of ambassadors or super fans, give them the tools they need to share our message. Also, we want to be here as a, not only to talk about ourselves, but to amplify the message of our partners, to bubble up the voice of the community to our corporate donor partners in the catalog that I mentioned earlier, and also to our global network and also to our staff. So we, and also to the rest of the community. So we really wanna be listening. Um, a community team should be listening and bubbling up, um, synthesizing the voice of the community, representing it. Uh, we also act as an internal agency to the organization. What that means is we advise on strategy to different teams. Uh, we also ghost post for certain teams, like uh, teams that their message might not be well suited for our TechSoup accounts. So for example, NGO source. Earlier, I talked about how we um, facilitate international grant making. The NGO source account is um, that account. We also run a TechSoup for libraries account. So the, the voice of the library account and the information we share and curate would be different than the information we share on the TechSoup account. Uh, we also want to identify every good, healthy community should be able to name and identify their top 10 super fans. That should be a goal. Uh, and so um, if you uh, have them offhand, congratulations. If you don't, you should listen in and Stephen will help you identify them. And once you do kind of harness and identify your top 10 super fans, you should be able to expand your network. And um, finally, we really want to educate nonprofits and help them learn about technology and share opportunities and grants with them and news of the sector. 
Next slide, please. And the kinds of content that we post, as I mentioned, news and events, opportunities and grants, uh, events uh, that we're we're hosting and others are hosting, um, delightful content. It's always fun to share some delightful content, whether it's beautiful or amusing. We save sometimes the delightful content for the weekends. Uh, evergreen content stuff that we think bears is more uh, useful than just once, like video highlights we like to repurpose. Uh, and um, stuff that's aligned, we like to be in lockstep step with our um, content strategy. Amy, who's here, uh, is on the content team. We like to, so that when the content team is writing about fundraising, we're also sharing about fundraising. We want to be aligned with our content team. Um, we want to promote trust. So we're very solutions-based and brand agnostic. We don't just pummel on one uh, technology company. We like to try to really share solutions so that we aren't, you know, hawking for one individual company, but we're actually like helping the nonprofits and that, that gives us trust. And finally, we're really highlighting the content of all of our teams across the global, the global network. Our team is really the kind of megaphone to highlight and amplify the work, the good work that's being done across our global network. Um, and so, um, that we as an organization can become a direct line uh, to the nonprofits and NGOs across the sector. We want to be able to be the ear and the mouthpiece so that the voice of the community, whether it's a customer service request or an idea or just a really cool project comes from the community, we listen and we synthesize it and share it with the organization. Um, and Finally, the large, every organization, you should all have an umbrella, a large umbrella of does this, does this content fit? And we actually say um, internally at TechSoup, we say no to some stuff that is submitted via our staff because it has to fit within tech for good. That's a huge umbrella. So if it has to do with technology for good, it fits within our brand. So um, you should all think about the largest umbrella of what your organization talks about, whether it's our, um, youth arts or whatever it is, um, food insecurity, whatever your organization's mission is, there should be one large umbrella and your content should fit under, underneath that umbrella. Next. And um, now I'm gonna pass it to Steven, our um, social media manager and community manager here at TechSoup. Perfect, thank you, Susan. Um, so yeah, so I'll start off by kind of breaking down how we look at social media engagement on a regular basis here at TechSoup. Um, so as um, Susan kind of mentioned earlier, it's important to determine your tone and stay consistent with that and also stay consistent with the kind of content that you're posting. So you'll want to develop some brand guidelines. You'll want to establish your voice, whether it's, you know, if you, is your voice serious? Are you posting about serious topics? Is there room for some playful um, messaging every once in a while? Um, it's important to kind of establish that first before you really try to establish your brand. Um, you also kind of want to, you know, pick which colors work for your organization. Um, as you're putting graphics together, as you are building your brand, you want to have a look that is recognizable for your organization. Um, you don't want to just use whatever color you want on one graphic and then whatever color you want on the other. Um, so it's important to stay consistent with that. And then again, about the topics, making sure that you are you are staying consistent with the kinds of um, content that you are pushing out. You want to make sure that you know the purpose of your channel and you stay consistent with that. Um, it's also important to be transparent when possible. So first of all, it's important to make sure that your profiles are public. Um, a lot of Twitter pri profiles could be private. Um, you want to make sure that people can find you. You want to make sure that people can see your profile and see what you're talking about, what your brand is about. Um, so make sure that it's public. Um, and you want to be able to ask for feedback and listen to your community. I think it's, you know, it's so easy to think you know what your community wants to see on their feed. It's so easy to think you know what they need. Sometimes it's important to just ask them, hey, what kind of content do you want to see? What um, Look at what kind of content they're posting about. What, what are they engaging with? And adjust your strategy accordingly. You also want to be proactive and you want to monitor your feeds, You know, log into Twitter, log into Facebook, whatever the platform might be, 
and just scroll through and see what everyone is posting about and um, stay on top of the trends. Create a time, you know, during your day, during your week, where you can just kind of scan through the feeds, where you can engage, respond to people. Um, you don't want to just log in and look for people that are engaging with you. You need to also log in and engage with others so they can notice you as well. Um, and then you want to be able to create awareness. Um, you know, you want to engage with influ influencers. You want to engage with people that you're partnering with. You uh, want to amplify their content as well. Um, and as you are curating this content from influencers, from partners, um, for your or own organization, it's important to stay organized. And, you know, I've seen people do it a ton of different ways. Here at TechSoup, we have a social media content calendar that we use on uh, Google spreadsheets. And so um, we'll put it in the chat, but we do have a little template spreadsheet that you could easily use for your or own organization. Just click on the link and make a copy and make it your own. Um, but it's a great way to kind of just stay organized and get a quick overview of what your week of content or your month of content looks like. So a few strategies that we're kind of focusing on here at TechSoup, um, because we're always trying to test new tools, we're always trying to test new strategies. It's always something we're, we're doing here at TechSoup. Um, so just to share with you a few little strategies that we're really focusing on right now. Um, the first one is Instagram Reels, which are, you know, short videos on Instagram. What we're noticing is the algorithm on Instagram loves videos lately. Um, I think that's probably, you know, not big news to anyone by now. If you're on Instagram, videos are everywhere there. But um, what's great about Reels is they can be discovered by people who don't follow you. So um, people can, if you post a Reel, users that don't follow you can discover you in the Reels tab in their home Instagram feed and in the explore section. So it makes it much more easy for you to be noticed by new people in an organic way. We also here at TechSoup use um, Twitter lists. And Twitter lists, if you're not familiar with them, are just simple lists where you can add users on Twitter and um, stay organized with them. So basically, whenever you create this list, and we'll go more into depth in this in a moment, you can put people into a list and it creates a specific feed of just those people. So rather than logging onto Twitter, seeing your feed that is full of everything that everyone has posted and retweeted, this Twitter list feed is only the people that you add in there. Um, and we'll dig into that in a moment. And then the last strategy is just video. Video always works on all the channels. It gets so it gets great engagement um, and much better engagement usually compared to a graphic image or no visual asset at all. Um, if you're thinking about what kinds of videos that your organization can post, um, a few here at TechSoup that we do, we do testimonial videos. Um, some are you know very highly produced. Some are just a simple testimonial that was recorded on Zoom and we just kind of cut it up and made it into a video for social media. You can also make snippets from events that maybe your organization has hosted or, or, or an event that your organization attended, and then impact stories. So now I'm gonna get into um, how to create a social media campaign and expand your reach. Um, and we'll kind of dig into each one of these steps, but uh, here's an overall view. So the first step will be to create the assets for your social media campaign. Um, and we'll go into what that includes. And the next step would be to identify your target audience for your campaign, who you want to be reaching as you implement your campaign. The third step is leveraging the, um, what Susan mentioned earlier is what we call the super fans which are the regular engagers that exist in your community. So we're gonna talk about how to leverage those users and help them, have them help you expand your reach and amplify your campaign. We'll go into then how you can share your sharing kit to your community. And then we will go into the optional step, which is social media paid advertising. So first you wanna create the assets for your social media campaign. Um, and we'll go into what that is in a moment, but 
It's important to do this first because it also helps you put together your sharing kit. And what your sharing kit is, is basically a simple document that provides language for users to easily copy and paste and, and post about your campaign to their own channels. It also includes details about your campaign so people know what they're sharing about. It includes visual assets that they could use in their posts, whether it's graphics or videos. Um, it also includes some other um, items that make it as easy as possible for people to share about your campaign. That's the whole point. You want to be able to make it as easy as possible for people to share whatever message you're trying to get out there. So a few items needed to create your sharing kit and campaign. Um, first of all, you want to identify your objective. What is it? Is it are you trying to get people to take a survey? Are you trying to get people to register for an event? Are you trying to just get traffic to a specific website? That should be established at the very beginning of all of this. You'll then wanna choose some relevant hashtags. Um, so here at TechSoup, we're always testing different hashtags. One very common hashtag we use is hashtag NP tech, nonprofit tech. Um, so a lot of times I'll search that in Twitter and I'll see what other people are using around that hashtag. So once you can identify one hashtag, you can usually search in the Twitter search bar, and you can usually find other relevant ones to include in the campaign as well. You'll also want to put together some messaging for your social media posts, um, and we'll go into detail in that in a, the next slide. Um, and then you'll also want to identify your social media handles. So as Susan uh, mentioned earlier, TechSoup, most of our accounts, except for YouTube, are um, simply at TechSoup, um, but that is not always the case. So it's important to have all of those readily available. Um, I know at TechSoup, we will create sharing kits for events that feature other organizations. So sometimes we'll need to grab different handles depending on the different platform and have those ready in the sharing kit. And I'll show what that looks like in a second. You will also need your downloadable visual assets. Um, those could be graphics, those could be speaker cards or video. Um, and if you're wondering what a speaker card is, here's a quick example of a podcast that had Beth Cantor and Allison Fine, um, and that had their headshots, their name, very easy for them to share, very easy for others to share. So a lot of times when we have our two-day conference or even, you know, an app demo event, we will create speaker cards of the speakers that are joining our event. Um, so a few suggested tools as you were putting together your visual assets. TechSoup does offer Adobe Express at no cost to your nonprofit. Um, we'll put the link in the chat. Um, but with Adobe Express, you can create graphics with no design skills needed. Um, you can also do a ton of other cool things with it. You can edit PDFs. You can schedule social media posts. Um, you can create animated uh, GIFs or videos. And similarly, Canva is another tool which does has a lot of the same features as Adobe Express. Um, there is It does cost money. You can use it for free, but it is a little limited. Um, but definitely check that one out as well. And lastly, there's also Canto. Canto isn't a tool to edit your, edit your visual assets. Canto is a tool to stay organized with your visual assets. It's kind of like a library where you can, you can tag your images, stay organized, search through them. So check those tools out. Um, the last two items you'll need for your sharing kit, you'll need some existing social media posts for easy resharing. What that means is you'll just need to already have existing social media posts from your account already out there in the social media world, already published. And I'll get to why that's important in, in a moment. And lastly, if needed, additional messaging for emails and newsletters, new email and newsletters. So this is what the sharing kit that I've been referring to, this is a template. So this is kind of what it looks like. Um, we'll put the link in the chat where you can easily make a copy and use this for your own social media campaigns. Um, but we make it super simple for you to just plug in what you need, you know, put the name of your campaign. You'll want to put the specific handles. We like to hyperlink them so it's easy to look at. So, um, you know, just make sure if they're different, make sure that's very clear. You'll want to include the specific hashtags that you want to be used in your campaign. And then you'll want the social media messaging. It's important that you have at least one variation of copy for Twitter. 
um, specifically because with Twitter, you can only post um, up to 280 characters. So you want to have at least one variation of copy that is specific to Twitter that makes it very easy for people to just copy that messaging and put it out on their Twitter profile. You'll also want some messaging with, you know, if you want to have more language, if you want to elaborate more on Facebook and LinkedIn, you have that ability. So have, having another variation for those platforms is also helpful. Again, for email and newsletter, um, obviously, you know, the messaging will be a little different coming out of an email or newsletter. So you'll want to provide that as well versus social media. Um, you'll also want to provide a link where people can easily download the visual assets. Um, you can, uh, with TechSoup, we offer, um, nonprofits could get Box where you could easily provide these links as well. I think we'll be putting that link in the chat. Um, and that is a great way to kind of upload and store items and put links in and have people easily be able to download from. And then lastly, you'll want to provide provide uh, URLs to all three or whatever social media posts that you have existing. The reason why we do this is because maybe people don't have time to copy and paste one of these items and share about it. Maybe people just would rather click on a tweet and then retweet it. And that, you know, amplifies your message just the same. So um, basically everything in here makes it as easy as possible for others to share your, your campaign. So if you were to you know, plug all of this in, this is kind of what it would look like. This is an old sharing kit that we did recently um, for, um, we were promoting some resources for nonprofits affected by the war in Ukraine. So this is kind of what it would look like. As you can see, we had specific messaging for Twitter and then um, other messaging for Facebook and LinkedIn. Obviously I couldn't include the entire screenshot in here, but this is kind of what it looks like. So the next step is identifying your target audience for your campaign. These are people that you want to discover, um, new people that you want to add to your community to help you with your campaign or people that you think that would be good to, you know, click on your, your website, take your survey, attend your event. So here at TechSoup, we use um, some tools to identify these people if we're really trying to build our community. Um, and we'll go into those tools in a moment, but in order to kind of identify who these users are, um, some items you could consider is what kind of hashtags would they use or what kind of keywords do they use? What are these people talking about? Um, where are these users located? Are you, you know, hosting an event in a specific area where it's in person? You know, do you, those kinds of things should be kept in mind. Um, and then also, are you trying to reach influencers with a large following or are you trying to reach users with a smaller following? And then lastly, what kind of words would these users probably be using in their Twitter bio? So, and also I would, I should make clear that these tools that I'm about to introduce are specific to Twitter. Um, so they're great tools. So the first one is audience which is a platform that helps organizations increase engagement with their Twitter followers and fine tune their outreach campaigns. There are a ton of cool features that audience offers and we'll be putting the link in the chat where you can get audience through TechSoup. Um, and I'll go over some other features in a moment, but- I just wanna just... to interrupt to answer um, a question that someone said, which was a really good point, is just that it's hard for everyone to kind of scroll through the, the chat to get these links. So I, I just wanted to mention that we um, will be um, we will be sending all of the links. We'll add a slide at the end of the presentation with all of the links that Andrew's been dropping in, so that you don't have to kind of filter through all of the the chat to find them. It's a very good point. Thank you for bringing that up, and uh, we will definitely uh, make sure that you get all of the links, um, Thomas. Absolutely, yes. And I know we we're we're including a lot of links in this presentation, but we'll make sure you get all of them in one place. Um, so yeah, so basically with audience, with the, for this purpose where you're trying to kind of narrow in and identify new users um, and the specific users that you want for your campaign, some um, with audience, you can filter through based off of different criteria. So some of the criteria is keywords in their Twitter bio, um, location, like I kind of spoke about, what language are they speaking? how active they are on Twitter, 
and follower count. So um, there, there's a ton of different ways you can filter through, through audience. These are just a few different items. Um, but once you kind of identify that, audience will dig into the Twitter community and pull up the people that meet this criteria. Um, and you'll be able to see who already follows you, who you already follow, you'll see mutual followers. And it's great to see that um, at this overview level because what you want is you want to have these mutual followers. So if people aren't following you yet, and these are perfect for your campaign, you want to follow them and you want to engage with them. Um, so keeping that in mind as you're kind of filtering through these lists is if you're not following them, it doesn't hurt to go follow them. It doesn't hurt to go like a few of their tweets and kind of try to get their attention a little bit. Um, that is the whole point of community building. Um, and with audience, you can also generate reports for your, your Twitter activity. You can also track engagement. You can create audiences based off of users that have engaged with you in an amount of time, whether, you know, it, maybe you can create an audience of people that have retweeted you five times within the last four weeks um, and have that automated in audience, which is very helpful because you want to know who's engaging with you. Um, and you could also, um, manage your Twitter ads through audience as well. The other tool is Treeps Map. Um, Treeps Map is a, um, another great tool that helps you uh, build your community in Twitter. Um, you can gain insights into your organization's top fans and um, you can target influencers and narrow in on your, the different audiences in your Twitter community. You can also discover new users. So there's a little bit of overlap between the two, but they do have their differences. Um, and, it, and with Tweeps Map, you can discover new users by filtering specific words in the Twitter bio, specific keywords that they're using in their tweets. You could also discover users that follow a specific account. So maybe you don't have a Twitter presence yet. You don't have a community and you're, you're building it from the ground up, but you know of an account that does have a community that's very similar to the one that you want you could analyze that community through this tool and follow those users um, and engage with them. So for example, if we wanted to build a community based on libraries and library and tech. Hey, Stephen, uh, I'm gonna jump in and say someone asked to enlarge some of these slide displays. Um, it's hard to see them even with glasses. So um, see. I'm not sure if I Michael can. Michael Hornstein just asked, and I think that's valid. Um, if you could just bump it up one notch. Let me see if I can zoom in. You can do the control plus to do that. Did that zoom in? Not yet. Bump I, it up once. I don't think it's doing okay. it. Okay. Oh, well, we'll send them around. Sorry. We'll make, yeah, we'll make sure you get the slides. Um, and from there, you'll be able to zoom in a little better. But I'll, I'll kind of describe what we're seeing here in these screenshots in the meantime. Um, so here in Treeps Map, we basically did a search for libraries and libraries interested in tech and the hashtag library tech. So what we did is we did that we put in this search. Sometimes it'll take a moment. You'll need to, you know, go get a glass of water while it generates and then come back. And what it will do is it will pull up a list of accounts similar to the previous platform. Um, and you'll be able to, again, see who's following you, who you're following, and you'll be able to engage with them and and um keep track of the users in this platform what i love about tweaks map is once you get this group of users you then get the option um, on the top right where you can add to the list and basically you're adding them to a twitter list which is what we mentioned earlier um, and this is great because you don't have to keep logging into this platform you can you can build this group and then you can send them directly to a twitter list on Twitter, where then you can then keep track and engage with them. Um, Twitter lists can be private. And in that case, no one will know that they're added to a Twitter list. If your Twitter list is public, people will be notified that you that they were added to your list. So you always wanna make sure that the list is appropriate. It's maybe a little flattering if you're trying to get their attention. Um, so as you can see here, here's a quick little glimpse of what the Twitter list view looks like. We have a ton of different lists that we have. Um, when we do events, we will usually create a Twitter list based off of people using the hashtag for the event, um, different things. And you could find your Twitter list section by going into the more section in Twitter. 
Um, and as I mentioned previously, it's super helpful to have a Twitter list because you can narrow in on what these people are posting about. You don't have to click on each profile and do it manually. It's all in one place. So once you have a list of new users that you want to engage with for your campaign, now you need to kind of dig into um, your super fans or your regular engagers that are engaging with you online and um, on a regular basis. So here at TechSoup, we have a few different ways that we, I, we like to identify our super fans. So monitoring engagement on native platforms, which when we say native platforms, we're referring to just going into the Facebook platform, going into the Twitter platform, going into the LinkedIn platform, and just monitoring engagement. If you are the social media manager, it's likely that you are probably noticing who's engaging with you more, where the patterns are, you're getting familiar with their names. In the same case for regular reporting. So here at TechSoup, we report on a weekly, monthly, and quarterly and yearly basis. Um, and so as you are re reporting, you will likely become familiar with who's engaging with you. Um, as I mentioned, the two tools that we were just referring to, Audience and Treeps Map, those will help you identify highly engaged users with your Twitter community. And then lastly, um, it's a manual way to do it, but it is very helpful. And at, here at TechSoup, we definitely do do it, but we have this spreadsheet and we will include a link to a template in the chat that you can easily copy and make your own. We will also make sure that it is in the post event email for you. Um, but basically what this is, is, is just a spreadsheet to kind of keep track of your, you know, top 10 true fans or however many it might be. You just want to have a specific set of criteria. So as you can see in this example, we have their name. We'll have, you know, maybe their Twitter account, maybe their email website. And we'll have some criteria that makes them a super fan. So as you can see here at TechSoup, they obviously should be a TechSoup member. Then we look at, are we following them on social media? Are they following us? Then we look at if they are a member of the TechSoup community forums and so on. So the goal is really to identify these users, identify where we can make them even more of a super fan and try to get this whole row green. Um, and obviously, you know, it really depends on your organization and what you do. So a super fan can be different depending on, you know, a lot of different factors. So as you are creating your own spreadsheet to track your regular engagers, a few items to keep in mind depending on your organization and what you do. Um, one way they could be a super fan is if they are on your email list and they engage with you. Um, another way is if they follow you on Twitter and if you follow them back and if you engage on Twitter. Um, if, you if you host events for your organization, maybe you want to look at who is regularly attending these events, who's coming back, who um, is engaging in the chat a lot, and then who's subscribed to your newsletter. And then lastly, I think it's also important to uh, track how often you're engaging with them. Um, you know, every week or so, we'll go into the spreadsheet, we'll look at who we need to engage with. It's been a while since maybe we've engaged with this user. Okay, let's go in, let's like some of their content, let's comment on some of their stuff, let's let them know that we're noticing them too. Because we don't want them to only engage with us, we want to also be engaging with them as well. So now you have your assets for your campaign, you have your sharing kit created, you have your target, target audience identified, and you have your super fans identified. Now you can fully implement your campaign. So what you need to do now is you need to take your sharing kit and you need to send this to your super fans or send this to whoever you think would be helpful. If you found some influencers through the tools that we mentioned, those would be great to reach out to. And you'll want to send them your sharing kit. You can share it through social media uh, direct message over Twitter or Facebook, whatever the platform might be. Um, you could also send them an email if you have that information and you could ask them to amplify your content. Uh, I just wanna mention that it's also important to offer to amplify their own content as well. You don't want it to seem like it's all about you. You want to return the favor. And so whenever you do ask them, hey, can you spread the word about this campaign? Here's our sharing kit. Um, say, also, is there anything that we can share on your behalf? 
And then last step, which is optional, if your organization is able to do it, but um, social media paid advertising. So there's, a, there's obviously some overlap across the different social media platforms as far as advertising goes. Um, these are just the kind of bullet points that we kind of look at and differentiate them from. Um, for Facebook and Instagram, you can target email lists. You could create lookalike lists out of those email lists, which are basically lists of people with similar habits. Um, Facebook, you know, has tons of information on these users and it's, they're able to make really, um, helpful audiences for you to target. Um, so lookalike lists usually do very well. You could also target different interests and demographics. That isn't all you can target, but those are kind of the main things that we really look at whenever we're looking at targeting on Facebook. Um, before we move on to the next platforms, we do have an ebook for how to prepare for an effective Facebook ad campaign. We'll make sure we put that link in the chat for you to download if it's helpful. We'll also make sure that we include that in the email. Um, for Twitter, you can also target email lists as well. But with Twitter, you can also narrow in and target very specifically um, based on hashtags and keywords. You could also target any Twitter account um, and target the followers of those accounts. That is one feature that you cannot do on Facebook. You can target some Facebook pages, but not all. On Twitter, you can target any account um, as long as it's public and you can target those followers. For the time being, we would just like to mention we have paused Twitter ads um, and we will be revisiting that in the future. And then for LinkedIn, we could also target email lists, um, but something a little unique about LinkedIn ads is you can target companies, you can target LinkedIn groups, which is unique to LinkedIn. You can't target Facebook groups. Um, and you could also target users with specific skills and job roles. So those are something, some things to keep in mind if you're exploring social media paid advertising. Um, and we're happy to answer more questions on that. If you ever have them, just email us at community at techsoup.org. So before we wrap up, we do want to mention that we do have a TechSoup course for social media, um, and we will be make sure that the link is in the chat. But you can get you can get twenty percent off uh, with the promo code twenty web dec at checkout. We'll make sure that all of that information is in the chat. We will also make sure all of that information is in the email as well. But we just wanted to highlight this if it is helpful for your organization. Hi, okay, I'm going to try to address all the questions. Stephen, you did a great job. Thank you, Stephen, for your expertise. Um, and by the way, that ebook that Stephen was talking about, he wrote, and it's really good. So uh -huh. you should all download it. He, you guys are really lucky to be listening to him for free because oh, he's <laughs> a big deal and he's really talented. Um, okay, so I'm going to try to answer some questions quickly, and so will Stephen. Uh, first one How does Tweeps Map compare to Hootsuite? They're very different. Um, Tweeps Map is a tool that helps you understand your Twitter audience. So if you don't use Tweeps Map, uh, you should um, if you're on Twitter, because otherwise it's just like a mess of, let's say, 6,000 people and you don't know who they are. But Tweeps Map helps you organize them by what they do, what they talk about, where they are, their demographics, how many followers they have, if they're following you. And Hootsuite is a social media listening and scheduling tool. So Hootsuite helps you listen to hashtags and topics and Twitter lists, like, uh, for example, the person who has the baby boomer audience, uh, whatever the topic is that your organization is about, Hootsuite would help you listen, doing social media listening to those topics and also scheduling and writing posts. Totally different tools. They don't, they don't do the same thing. Um, next question someone asked about um, how do you, how, how, could you explain how email lists and lookalike lists work? Uh, so Stephen, I'm gonna let you take that one. Definitely, yeah. So basically um, you'll wanna grab your email list and usually you'll need, I, I don't quote me on this because I can't recall the exact number, but I think you'll need at least a hundred um, in order for Facebook. A hundred email addresses in, in Excel format or XML, and, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yes. Um, so you'll need to upload that into the Facebook ads manager. Um, and um, I am happy to help anyone who needs help finding that place to do that. Um, feel free to reach out. But basically what you'll do is you will upload this list, um, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet 
Um, I believe you could also copy and paste the list, but just make sure that it's, you know, you're, it's clean. Um, you'll want to put that in the ad manager and it will generate that audience where you could target that email list. So whenever you put out the ads, it will only go to the people that are on that email list. What you could also do is create an email list out of, or I'm sorry, a lookalike list out of the email list. And that is people that have the same habits of those people in the original list. I'm not sure how Facebook is able to do it, but they do do it. They're able to really narrow in and find the people that are most similar to that original list. I want to um, just jump in and uh, Fourth Street asked if there's any way like Tweet Sweep. You mean Tweeps Map for Instagram and Facebook? The answer is um, if you pay, you can do some stuff, but for free, no. You can target some people uh, through ads, but you can't understand your community because Facebook's a walled garden. They are very private. They don't have an open API. Like Twitter has an open API, which is how tools like Audience and Tweeps Map build on that. Go ahead, Stephen. Sorry. No, 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 totally. Um, and yes, that is absolutely correct. Um, and, and to answer your question about the privacy concerns, um, LM, uh, these are not, these are, these are the email addresses. It matches the email addresses that people use for Facebook and does lookalikes. So you're not actually targeting their email addresses. It's people like them that, and it matches the email addresses of that they've used for Facebook. So it's, it's all GDR compliant. And Both of these tools are, are not based in the U.S. Right. And, and with the email list, you know, it's, it's email list that you've already generated from your nonprofit. It's already people that have given your their emails to you. It, you don't want to be, you know, searching around the web and just grab emails from random places and then target them. That, right. you know, is a different thing. Um, but, you know, the point of email list is it's a list that your organization already has, that you're already sending emails to. So, um, yeah, and then basically the lookalike list is just people with similar interests, similar habits. Um, and from my experience with Facebook ads, lookalike lists do really well. Uh, not always the case, but they do do really well. So I highly recommend testing those if you are running Facebook ads. I'm about to answer the other two, but I just wanted to know, I, I jumped in and interrupted you. Did you finish your other point? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. Sure. Um, so I, um, Alicia is asking, can you please share strategies to grow your platform if you're relatively new to social sites? For example, if you're new and you won't have super fans yet. Good point. And, and I also want to kind of conflate that with a question that was earlier about growing your LinkedIn presence. So um, it, it, it's a definite, like it, it's a process. Um, the way that we do it from the ground up, like I've launched many communities from the ground up, including the public good app house community, is a great way to start is to start following searching people uh, for by hashtags. So Twitter is much easier to do than Facebook. Uh, but but through Facebook, you just have to use the search bar and hope and use paid advertising. But uh, through Twitter, you can search hashtags and bio tags which is why it's important to put what you do in your bio and use a hashtag in your bio because then you can search people and start following them and see who they're following and look at the Twitter lists that they uh, are on and look at the Twitter lists that they follow and they have created and start following people and engaging with them and your community will grow. Uh, also, um, looking at just doing hashtag searches on Instagram or on Twitter for like just putting in a hashtag and searching all the people that use that starting to follow those folks. Um, what other, what other quality, what other ways can they grow Stephen? Um, yeah, I was just going to say, you know, you just really want to get there, you know, find your target audience, find these people that you want to be in the community and just engage with them and get their attention. And then, and, and, Find ways to enter the conversation, attend events, engage, in, you know, in the chat like you all are doing. Um, that's really the way to, to do it is just you just got to get people's attention. And also um, with regard to LinkedIn, LinkedIn is really challenging, I think, to um, build your we found it's challenging to build your organizational presence on LinkedIn. Uh, what I recommend is that you post frequently, like um, not too frequently, by the way, that's that's something interesting I just learned from Heather Mansfield. Um, her website is called um, Nonprofit Tech for Good, and she's at nonprofits, at nonprofits on Twitter. Uh, she is like the guru of nonprofit social media. I've learned everything I know from her. And um, she recently 
um, had a blog post, I think yesterday or the day before, where she said that you can post too often. So um, don't post more than once a day, especially if you have a small audience. If you have under 30,000 people, you should be posting on each channel, just one, one to two posts a day, no more than that. Otherwise you're posting too much and you're diluting your message. Uh, so post, um, you know, three times, three to five times a week on LinkedIn. Also post on satellite communities. What I mean by that are groups that are interesting to you and are similar to your mission. Uh, post, get, get someone from your staff to be a regular contributor to those communities and post there. Don't only post about yourself. Uh, post stuff that's interesting, answer questions, like other people's posts, engage on those communities. And um, that that's a good way to get your um, presence up on LinkedIn as well. But LinkedIn is a little bit more challenging than Twitter to grow your presence. Do you have anything to add to that, um, Stephen or Andrew and Eli in the chat? Um, no, I just second that. LinkedIn is is definitely the most different compared to the others. Um, and it is important to kind of keep track of what's working and what's not. For example, we don't we noticed that we never got engagement on LinkedIn on the weekends, whereas we do on Twitter and Facebook. So on Twitter and Facebook, we post on the weekends. On LinkedIn, we take a break. So it is important to kind of evaluate each one separately and see what works for each one and what doesn't. I'm putting in the link uh, to Nonprofit Tech for Good right here in the chat. Whoops, oh my God, that was a huge, uh, I just did a copy paste. Oh here, it's I can do it. NP Tech for Good, it, it did that weird like tracking thing. It's just nptechforgood.com. And it, it, uh, it did a, a Bing tracking thing, but it's just NP Tech for good. Yep. Uh, so it looks like Ellsworth says LinkedIn is my superpower platform. Interesting. Put in the chat, Ellsworth, what, what you do. I'd love to know from you because we struggle with it. Um, yeah. And I think following Heather Mansfield on Nonprofit Tech for Good is everybody's first step. Like, and you can tweet it out, tweet out at nonprofit or at nonprofit orgs um, that, that I sent it. And here's my Twitter handle. <laughs> because um, actually, it, Stephen, you should put your Twitter handle in because yeah. honestly, Heather is is the expert. She's the person who started all of this. She's great. Um, and obviously we're at TechSoup. Um, I'm looking here. Aloha, Jesse from Hawaii Aquatics. Well, I'm from Hawaii, Jesse. I don't know if you are on, from Oahu, but I am. And here's my Hawaiian bracelet to prove it. My middle name is Miley. I was born and raised there. My father is there right now. Uh, you are scaling... Uh, developing scalable standards based on aquatics. Okay. Uh, we are studying our social media strategy from scratch. Uh, yes, we'll be sharing it as a recording. And also um, I should connect. Oh, I was going to say I should connect you with my friend, but I think this is her. <laughs> I was going to say I should connect you with my friend, um, Jesse, but I think this is the same Jesse. So there you go. Um, and what we will be sharing, you know me, and we will be sharing this. Um, uh, yeah, it's the same, Jesse. That's so funny. Um, okay, and um, Kevin Mulhall is talking about LinkedIn. Um, should include. Wondering if that would make a con make sense in conjunction with posting as a power. Use. Kevin Mulhall, the Microsoft ads for social impact grant should include the ability to advertise on the platform. I'm wondering if that should make sense in conjunction. Well, yeah, I mean. LinkedIn ads, I'm not totally sure what you mean, Kevin, but um, the LinkedIn ads are expensive. Um, they're hard to do and they're expensive. Sometimes they're up to $8 a result versus like 80 cents per result on a good Twitter ad. So I'm not totally sure what you mean, um, but maybe you can follow up later, Kevin. Kevin works with us. Um, I know that we're almost at time. Uh, do, does this end at 11? It does, right? Yes. I believe so, yes. Yes. So Aretha, if you want to just close us out. This was really good. I learned a lot. Thank you both. And thank you, um, Eli in the chat room, Amy and, and Aaron. Thank you so much. Um, please fill out the survey and we'll see you guys in the next webinar. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Feel free Bye. to reach out and connect with us on all of the social channels. Bye.